Hello students. In this video, I'll discuss an important aspect of income tax computation that is the pension contribution. And then I will solve a past paper extract related to this particular topic in the CB format. And then we'll discuss some examiner tips. So first of all, the pension contribution, which is an important topic for your examination, in that we know that there is an annual allowance available for an individual in every tax year. And for tax year 2021, that annual allowance is available 40,000. Now, sometimes it happens that that particular allowance is to be reduced. So what are those situations? So first of all, the annual allowance is gradually reduced for individuals with high income. So if in the question, if there is high income, then you have to calculate that particular limitation. This restriction applies to individuals having a threshold income above 200,000 and adjusted income above 240,000. It means if someone has threshold income up to 200,000, there is no need to calculate anything. And if threshold income is above 200,000, but adjusted income is up to 240,000, again, there is no need to calculate any value. But if threshold income is exceeding 200,000, as well as adjusting income exceeding 240,000, then you have to calculate the reduction in annual allowance through this formula that is adjusted income minus 240,000 excess multiplied by 50%. But maximum reduction is 36,000. Means from 40,000, the maximum reduction is 36,000. It means the annual allowance would be 4,000. It cannot go beyond that. You cannot decrease further. That is the restricted amount. But first of all, you have to calculate and then decide whether you have to take this 4,000 or any other amount. Now, what is the definition of threshold income? In order to find out threshold income, first you have to calculate individual's net income. Then you have to deduct just only one thing and that is individual's gross PPC, personal pension contribution. Remember, the value must be gross. So if net value has been given, you have to gross it up and then deduct. Next thing you have to work out is adjusted income. The same definition of net income, and then you have to add rather than deduct the individual's employees occupational pension contribution, not the personal pension contribution, plus employer's contribution in any scheme, whether it's a personal pension scheme of an individual or an employee's employer's occupational pension scheme. Now, after identification of this adjusted income, if adjusted income is more than 2,40,000, then reduction is to be calculated. And you can see in this chart, this is a summary of the overall rule. If threshold income is less than equal to 200,000, no need for calculation. The amount is fixed, 40,000. If threshold income is above 200,000, but adjusted income is up to 2,40,000, again, no calculation is required. But if threshold income is above 200,000 and adjusted income is above 240,000, then there is a calculation, which is excess amount multiplied by 50%. So for example, suppose my adjusted income is 260,000, threshold is 240,000. So excess is 20,000 into 50%. So 10,000 is the reduction. Now, annual allowance for tax year is 40,000. So, reduction is 10,000. Now, current year annual allowance available is 30,000. Now, see an exam question. Your client Jessica has requested advice in relation to the tax liability arising on a redundancy payment, the options available to relieve her share of a partnership trading losses and the maximum contribution she can make to a personal pension scheme. This is the part question related to pension scheme. Jessica is resident and domiciled in 
UK. She was employed by B Limited up to 31st March 2021, that is in the tax year 2021, when she was made redundant and will become a partner from 1st July 2021. Now, partnership detail has been provided as well. Prior to 1st July, there were two partners in the partnership, I and F. It means she is now admitting into an existing partnership business. From 1st July, the sharing will be 20%, 40%. What is the share of Jessica? That is 40%. Now, this is a case of admission of partner. And for a new partner, the commencement rule of basis period is applicable. The budgeted tax adjusted trading profit for the first year after she has joined the partnership is there is a loss. So she will get the share of loss means no income in the tax year 22, 23. And in the year ended 23, there is a profit. So she will get her share of profit. That is 205 into 40%. She will get her share of profit from this. Now, the main element is pension contribution. Jessica joined a registered personal pension scheme on 1st May 2021. So this is joining date. And this joining date uh, indicates that the tax year uh, we have to consider it's 21-22. Uh, she has not previously been in any pension scheme. She wishes to make the maximum possible contribution, which will qualify for tax relief in each of the tax year 21-22 and 22-23. So examiner is asking about the maximum possible contribution that she can make in 21-22 as well as 22-23. But remember that there is an important element in the question. She was not previously being registered before 21-22 and 22-23. Now, this is the question from the uh, exam paper. You have to explain. Now, requirement is very important in exam, whether you have to explain only, whether you have to calculate only, whether you have to do both. So in this question, part question, explain with supporting calculation wherever you need. So both explanation and calculation is needed. The maximum amount of contribution she can pay into her pension scheme in both the years without incurring an annual allowance charge. Now you need to have a comprehensive knowledge of the pension topic. That is what is the maximum amount available? What is the annual allowance? How annual allowance charge is to be calculated and how you can reduce your double A and only five marks are there. So you don't need to involve in lengthy calculation or lengthy explanation, just you have to explain in both the year what is the maximum amount of contribution she can make without incurring an annual allowance charge. So let's move to the practice platform. Now, as uh, I have to do some explanation, so I'm using the word processing document here. And in this word processing document, I will explain in if I have to do some calculation, I will opt for the calculation part as well. Now, in the question, it was mentioned that I have to identify the maximum amount. So first of all, I have to uh, explain what is the maximum gross contribution each year. So the maximum gross contribution that I have to make is First of all, the maximum gross contribution is, now I have to identify the rule that it is the higher of two things, the relevant earning of the individuals, in the tax year
relevant earnings and then the basic amount and what is the basic amount this is fixed and that has been given in the tax sheet this is the maximum gross contribution or the amount of tax relief is the higher of individuals relevant earning and the basic amount that is 3600 now after mentioning this we have to check that in 2021 what is the position of uh, relevant earning and in 22 23 what is the position of relevant earning now as we have studied the as we have read the requirement so in tax year 21 22 the relevant earning of jessica is zero because at the beginning of the partnership there are partnership losses so if partnership because partnership is having losses so her share is the loss in the partnership so what is the maximum contribution so maximum contribution is 3600 in the tax year 2022 Now in the next year, we have to identify the relevant earning. So in 2223, a share of profit from partnership is, now you can work out here the calculation. That is the partnership uh, profit was in total, it was 2,5,000. and uh, her share was 40%. So that comes to be the value is 82,000. So relevant earning is 82,000 and maximum amount is the relevant earning. It means what? It means she can contribute maximum 82,000 in this year. But if she contribute 82,000, so we have to check that how much is the amount available? So in this way, the the annual allowance available in twenty two twenty three is. Forty thousand current year that is twenty two twenty three and unused of twenty one twenty two. And what is that unused? So last year we have forty thousand of allowance, and the last year there is only thirty six hundred contribution. We can make maximum so in this way the unused of 2122 is we calculate this it's 36400 so as a result total amount is 
40 plus 36,400 is 76,400. On the basis of this, you can conclude that though she can contribute 82,000 maximum, but if she contribute 82,000, the annual allowance available in 22, 23 is only 76,400. And then there will be an annual allowance charge. So what is the beneficial thing is how much she have to contribute without incurring an annual allowance charge. So in 22, 23, she has to make a contribution equal to 76,400 in order to avoid the double A charge. Now, effectively, with respect to the marks available, I have uh, covered all the details. In 21-22, I have not discussed much because we have the only amount available is 3600. So how much we can contribute 3600? If you contribute more than that, then you have to pay annual allowance charge. But in 21-22, the annual allowance was 40,000 because unused allowance cannot be used because she was not a member of the pension contribution scheme. But when we, uh, when we are in 22-23, the current year is 40,000 and the unused is 36,400 from the previous year, which was not being utilized. So the capacity has been increased in 22-23 up to 76,400. But in the previous year, that capacity was up to 40,000. And the maximum amount was only available to 3,600. Now let's move to the comment of examiner on this particular question. Once again, just see the requirement. You have to explain with supporting calculation. So I have explained the concept as well as whatever calculation was important. The maximum amount of contribution in each year 21, 22 and 22, 23 without incurring an annual allowance charge. There is no need to calculate the threshold income, the adjusted income, because the taxpayer is not a higher income taxpayer. Now, this is the examiner comment on this part of the question and says that the final part of the question concern an explanation and calculation of the maximum amount of contribution, which could be paid into personal pension scheme without incurring an annual allowance charge. The majority of the candidates were aware of 40,000 allowance because it is already given in the tax sheet and the ability to bring forward unused allowance. But a significant number failed to relate their knowledge to the scenario because we know that we can use the three years unused allowance and we can increase 40,000 value. So they brought forward several years worth of unused allowance despite the fact that taxpayer had not previously been in any pension scheme and spending considerable amount of time calculating whether or not the maximum amount of allowance would be restricted. Although there is no need when a quick calculation would be, would have revealed that the taxpayer income fell well below the income limit. So at the ATX level, journal rules are rarely required candidates will invariably be asked to apply rules to a given scenario. For example, in the situation, you have to see whether this rule is applicable or no. So they must ensure that they have taken this into consideration at every stage of their answer to avoid wasting time. So this will help you to understand that how a given topic can be applied in a particular exam situation and how you can save your time uh, in, uh, in an exam scenario and maximize your marks availability.